Hello everyone. As always, I appreciate you guys checking out my videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some photos I took with the Fuji GF 35 to 70 millimeter. It is what people call a kit lens. I really don't call it a kit lens, but it has an aperture of 4.5 to 5.6. So you're not going to get a lot of light in poorly lit environments but if you go out on a nice on a nice average day it doesn't even have to be super sunny and you're going to see some photos in different settings some that I took with flash some that I took in really bad lighting and some that I took on a nice sunny day so I'm just going to get down to it I really was afraid of keeping this lens because I had the 45 uh, millimeter f 2.8. I sold it and I also sold the 110 millimeter f 2. So what I did was I replaced those two lenses with the 35 to 70 and the 80 millimeter f 1.7. Now, I also got rid of my beloved Fuji GFX 50R. I really, really enjoyed using that camera. I went with the GFX 50S Mark II simply because of my brain injury. I needed something with more grip and I wanted and maybe even needed image stabilization because sometimes my, it happens randomly where my hands will begin to tremor and reaction time is slow as hell. <laughs> That's something that I really have to work on uh, through therapy. And so I don't really do any street photos like I used to. And so this weekend was really, this past weekend was really the, the first time we went anywhere. And thankfully, you know, uh, Mystic Connecticut it had some really nice days and some really cloudy days. So I was able to test out the 35 to 70 millimeter and see how it would compare to the rest of the Fuji lenses that I used to own. Uh, excuse me, the Fuji GFX lenses. So I'll say it outright. It performed admir admirably well. It, there were moments where I took uh, people in motion, like doing stuff, and I was able to get them in the uh, in motion, and and the, and the lens and the camera was able to focus on them with no issues. As far as weight, it is pretty lightweight. Of course, it retracts so that it it looks a lot smaller, but when it's uh, when you un uh, compress it, I guess that's a word. It's about average size. It's close to what a 45 millimeter F2 would look like as far as uh, length and the height. I mean, excuse me, and weight. Once again, it's lighter than the 45. I haven't tried the 30. I did have the Fuji GF 50 millimeter, and that too is a light lens, but I wanted something with some zoom and. I was really impressed. I was a little afraid because at 70 millimeters and Lightroom will read it as 55 millimeters, which is pretty interesting. I have to test it out on Capture One. But at 70 millimeters at 5.6, at 5.6, if you try to shoot something at its uh, minimum focus range, it will come out soft. And I've demonstrated that in my previous video. But 70 millimeters at, let's say, 8, F8, was, there was no issues. Anyway, so I'm going to get to the photo. So the first photo is nothing special. It's a photo of uh, some of my action figures. Voltron in the background. Um, Snake Pliskin from Escape from New York in the foreground. I wanted to try uh, to take a photo 
of something in the foreground and the background with uh, at, at 70 millimeters. This is at 70 millimeters at F8. The lighting is not the best, so I had to put it at ISO 3200. One fiftieth of a second, that in-body stabilization really works. So the next photo is I started to try 70 millimeters with flash. So I took some photos of some of my wa uh, wife's watches. So here is 70 millimeters at F11. And of course I'm using flash. So my ISO is at 100. The third photo is another watch that my wife owns. Once again, 70 millimeters at F11 and I'm using flash ISO 100. So the photos look clean. They look sharp. Everything that uh, I used F11 so I could try to get as much of the watch in focus and it performed really well. So this photo is in uh, Connecticut and once again, 70 millimeters at F8. Shutter speed is 125th and I use an ISO, I used an ISO of 320. And this is handheld. I was not using a, a tripod. So there was a tree that was sitting all alone in this giant, uh, it was a beach, there's a beach right be, behind those trees. And so I used 70 millimeters, F8. Shutter speed was one two, one two fiftieth of a second and ISO 400. Once again, 70 millimeters, F8, shutter speed 125th, and the ISO 800. 70 millimeters once again. Uh, let me see, uh, 70 millimeters, ISO 800, F8, and shutter speed 100. Then I went wide, and here is 30 millimeters, now, once again, let me remind you that Lightroom is taking, is converting. You know how a lot of people talk about GF, the GFX system and they go, if you know, they tell you if you multiply the camera lens, the GF lens, let's say a 45 millimeter and you multiply it by 0.79, you get somewhere at about 36 millimeters. So basically this is what uh, Lightroom did. It converted it into 35 millimeter uh, equivalent. ISO is 30, uh, 320 and aperture F 5.6. Here's another shot at 70 millimeters. And in, not in Lightroom, it's showing 55 millimeters. So this is 70 millimeters, ISO 3200, F11, and shutter speed uh, 1 100. So here's one of the beach. I went at the widest, which is 28 millimeters, AKA 35 millimeters. And the ISO was 100, F11, and a shutter speed of 1, to uh at 250. I'm not gonna get all technical. Here is another photo of the beach, and I wanted to get two individuals. It was based pretty much there was four people at this specific part of the beach. <laughs> uh two of those were my myself and my wife. And so these other two individuals were collecting shells or rocks. And I wanted to get them in, in, in the photo. So I went with a shutter speed of 250, F11. And this was 70 millimeters. And also ISO 100. Here's a, a, a wide shot at 35 millimeters. Uh, Lightroom calls it. 
or converted it into 28 millimeters. ISO is 100 and so is the shutter speed. Let's switch over to the next photo. Photo of my wife collecting uh, rocks. And this was, I believe, 35 millimeters. I wanted to get uh, the entire view. There's a boat in the background. Uh, looks like a cruiser, uh, actually. And so that is uh, 35 millimeters. F8, shutter speed 100, and so is the ISO 100. Another photo of my wife looking at the water. She's camera shy, so she didn't want to take she didn't want me to show her face, but she didn't know that I was taking this particular photo of her looking into the sea. And this is a 70 millimeter shot. ISO 100, shutter speed 100, aperture F8. So here are a bunch of rocks she collected. I went with 35 millimeters, F8, shutter speed 250 and ISO 100. Here's another 35 millimeter shot, ISO 100, F8, and shutter speed of 250. Now, a lot of people say, you know, when you're taking landscape type shots, have something in the foreground, I saw this cool tree. And once again, I wanted to try 70 millimeters with something in the foreground and background. So this is 70 millimeters, F9, shutter speed 100. I wanted to get a little motion from the waves coming in. And of course, ISO is 100. Then there's a photo of my wife waiting for me. This is at 70 millimeters, F9, shutter speed 100. ISO 160. Then I took a photo of, we passed by a cemetery over there in Mystic, Connecticut. Once again, 70 millimeters, F6.4, shutter speed 250, ISO 100. Here's another photo I took with something in the foreground. I took uh, this shot at, I believe it's, 40 millimeters, ISO 125, F5.6, and shutter speed 250. Now here's a different angle with the same light pole, which had plant life growing inside of it. That's the reason why I took it. And this is outside of the cemetery where I took that photo of the tombstone. So if you zoom in, you could actually read some of the names. But this is at 48 millimeters, according to Lightroom. And unfortunately, I can't, I don't know why I said unfortunately like that. But unfortunately, I can't convert it right now. Uh, you know, brain injury stuff. So my aperture was f8. My shutter speed was 250. The next photo, I wanted to see how I can take a photo of something that had a lot of uh, highlights. It was really bright this particular day. And you have a white, you know, white a house painted in white. And so I said, okay, there's uh, some harsh shadows and some really bright highlights. And so... I took this photo, and of course, I made some adjustments in Lightroom. So the ISO is 100, 46 millimeter, according, according to Lightroom. Remember, it's converted into 35 millimeter equivalent. So this is maybe 50 millimeters. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, aperture is F8 and shutter speed 125. So here's a photo of my son and his girlfriend. They are petting, uh, I forgot the name of this dog. They're huge and very, uh, very friendly. So I put ISO 1000 because what happened, if you're familiar with photography, 
they were facing away from the sun. So I was getting them in, uh, the, the sun is on their backs and mo most of the shadows are on their face. So I had to increase the ISO. That's why the background looks so bright. This is 35 millimeters, uh, excuse me, 37. Aperture of F8 and shutter speed of 200. I saw these boats docked. Uh, this was actually a museum in Mystic, the seaport. And so this is 35 millimeters, ISO 100, ap an aperture of five, and shutter speed is 500. Here is a fire boat, and this is 29 millimeters, ISO 100, aperture f4.6, and a shutter speed of 500. So as you can see, I'm doing different lighting. I'm taking photos in different lighting situations of people, of objects. Um, soon I'm going to show you some interior shots. So here is uh, my friend, uh, excuse me, my son and his friends and his girlfriend next to him. Um, they're currently studying together at Mr. Connecticut. Uh, they're roasting marshmallows. So here's ISO 400. 31 millimeter, f4.8, and a shutter speed of 320. I wanted to make sure that I got that I froze the action. My son's girlfriend laughing at him because uh, he ate a marshmallow and made a mess of himself. So I was able to capture this. Uh, I saw the I saw her cracking up, and I, and I was like, I got to capture this really quick. This is at 70 millimeters, ISO 400. Actually, I had to leave the aperture at 5.6 and adjust the ISO really quick because once again, they were f the way they were facing was oddly, half of them was in the shadows, half of them uh, wasn't. So anyway, uh, aperture was 5.6, shutter speed 320 at 70 millimeters. So here's an interior shot. This was in the museum. I shot this at 35 millimeters. ISO 1600. I left the aperture at 4.5 and a shutter speed at 100. Here's the other half of uh, this particular room in the museum. Uh, same app, uh, same aperture, 5.6, 35 millimeter. Shutter speed is 100 and the ISO 1600. So here's a photo I saw. I saw this uh, nicely set up cozy looking table with the harsh light coming right through and making a nice pattern with the window frame. So I had to take that photo. So what I did obviously was um, I exposed for the light hitting the table. So I went with ISO 100. This is 35 millimeters F 4.5 and a shutter speed of 100. Then there was a, a basement where it had all these tools to create clothing and everything like that. So I had to go with an aperture of 2,500 at 35 millimeters, aperture of eight and a shutter speed of 100. This was a room with a, with a little uh, chest on top of a, a clothing cabinet. Uh, ISO 2,500. Uh, 35 millimeters, F8, shutter speed of 50, 1 50th of a second, hand held, held, excuse me. Uh, this is how their classrooms used to look in this particular town. So the ISO, 2500, 35 millimeters, aperture of F8, and once again, shutter speed of 1 50th. So that's it. These are the photos that I was able to take this past weekend with the Fuji GF 35 to 70 millimeter lens. I was a little uh, skeptical about keeping this lens and maybe rebuying the 45, but I wanted that focal range. I wanted 35 to 70. 
and and all, and we know if you uh, if you convert it to thirty five millimeter, it's twenty eight to fifty five, and you can see that I did a bunch of different types of photos. I did product photography. I took a photo of you know some action figures, some uh, my son and his friends, some architecture type photos, indoor photos, um, landscape type photos. It performed, the lens performed like a champ. And so I'm going to keep it. And I'm, I'm actually really liking this lens now. I really like it. And the price, the weight, and the image quality with the exception of using it as 70 millimeters at its closest focal, focal range, um, that's the only downfall. Even not having an aperture ring is really not a big deal because I've used cameras that, that don't have, or camera bodies or, or lenses from different manufacturers, excuse me, that don't sell lenses with an aperture ring. Fuji is one of the few. So I was accustomed to using a different dial for adjusting my ISO and my, my F-stops. It's a really, uh, I recommend this lens. If you're looking for a very lightweight lens that you can walk around with and even use it professionally if you want to, I've seen some people taking really awesome looking portraits with this lens. It, it's it's a winner in, in Fuji's book or in Fuji's lineup. They have an, a, 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 it, re, it reminds me of the 18 to 55 for the X mount uh, camera bodies. And that lens is great. They call it a kit lens as well. So this is the equivalent to that. If you have that 18 to 55 for any of your Fuji X mounts, you're probably going to be happy with, this 35 to 70 because the performance image quality it handles that huge 50 megapixel sensor with no issues and autofocus is not that bad it's not going to i wouldn't recommend it at a sporting event or something like that but then again the fuji gfx system really isn't for that so we know that already i'm not saying nothing new but i hope you enjoy these photos, if you are in the, if you're on the fence about purchasing this 35 to 70 over the more expensive, but yet uh, highly, uh, highly admired, and I'm not making sense here, but the thing is 36 to 64 or the 32 to 64, uh, which is bigger, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a constant F4 more expensive as well. Uh, I never owned that lens. I never used it, so I can't make a fair comparison. But if you want a perfect companion for your GFX system, where you can travel, no, ma you know, no matter where you're traveling, you could take this with you. It's weather sealed, you know, uh, pretty sturdy as far as its belt quality. And most importantly, uh, the, 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 the rendering is, is really great. So I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you as always for watching my videos. Let me know in the comments section, if you own this lens and what you thought of the photos. So until next time, you guys take care.